Hi and welcome to Bad Movie Brothers. I'm Eric. And I'm Chad. And tonight we watch The Return to Boggy Creek. Return to Boggy Creek. What kind of crazy place is this? Does somebody live here? Yeah. The monster. Over 15 million people thrill to the legend of Boggy Creek. Now the monster returns to stalk the swamps and terrify the citizens in his own very special way. The all-new Return to Boggy Creek, the family adventure picture of the year. Are you too scared to come back? Return to Boggy Creek. So, what did you think of the return? Is this? Is this a real movie? Did you send me a real movie? Or is this like a commercial? This, I'm not sure. Well, it's absolutely a real movie. I will show you. Here's the here's the movie itself. Okay. I'll show it to the folks at home. This is a laser disc you own? A video disc, sir. Okay, sorry. Yes, I bought it recently at a Goodwill. And did you transfer it off the laser disc or how did you do that? Well, now hold on. Obviously, we don't make any illegal copies of anything for Why this would show. We? Why would we? We only watch legitimate home Laser video disc. copies. Oops. Yeah. Right. Uh, even though you live in a different state, obviously, I mailed you the video disc and you watched yes. it that way. Obviously. Uh, obviously. But, uh, yes. Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> yes, I did. Now, this is a sequel to some other movie that's completely different. Well, sort that's a good point. Sort, do you know a lot about this? No. I actually know a lot about this. Why? Because, have you met me? Yeah, it's true. So this is a sequel to a movie called The Legend of Boggy Creek. Right. Which I have seen. Before this? Yeah, I saw the, I saw Boggy Creek years ago. Okay. And Boggy Creek is a I, I guess I would call it Blair Witch style uh -huh. faux documentary. And then you saw this and you went, ooh, a sequel. <laughs> oh, no, it's more complicated than that. Oh. It's more complicated. Cause, so I'd seen Boggy Creek, weird faux documentary, where, where supposedly the stories they tell are true, but drunk. Okay. About, and we should we should tell the viewers, these are stories about Bigfoot. Uh, Big Bay Tie. Oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but a Bigfoot monster. Okay. Right? Yep. So Boggy Creek. Very well respected Bigfoot movie. All right. It has a cult following. I think it is the worst. I think it's real bad. Well, worse than Return to Boggy Creek? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And here's wow. the thing. Here's the thing, buddy. There's also now. So that's that's the Legend of Boggy Creek. Then you get the Return to Boggy Creek, which we'll be talking about tonight. And then there is a third Legend Boggy of Boggy Creek. Creek three, right? No. Or two. Two. Okay. It's called Boggy Creek 2, The Legend Continues. Boogaloo. It was featured on Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, I think I saw that. So I had seen both of those, and then when I was at the Goodwill and I saw this, I thought, well, this must just be, this must be some other name yeah. for Boggy Creek 2. But no, it's a completely different movie that apparently the filmmakers so disliked that back in the days before it was cool, they threw it out and rebooted the franchise with an you. official Boggy Creek 2. I dislike this one. I, I, that was the, that was the sense I had. Yeah. It's terrible. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop a bomb on you. Please. I loved it. Why? I loved it. Well, that's what we're gonna talk about tonight, isn't it? <laughs> oh, because I wonder the same thing. Why did you not like it? Everything. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong, sir. Okay. I thought this movie was a delight. Well, then I cannot wait to hear it. Well, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. But before we we should talk to the viewers. And we should tell. So this is so the, the plot of Return to Boggy Creek. And that's being generous. Yeah. Is that... Follows... Uh, yeah, yeah. Marianne from Gilligan's Island comes back. And she falls in love with some guy in Boggy Creek. They have children, and then her children are terrible. No, her children are amazing. And then they get stuck in a rainstorm, and 
what appears to be Bigfoot saves them. Yes, that is pretty much the plot. Although yeah. we don't we don't see half of what you just said. Right. While Marianne is in this movie, she is barely in it. Yeah, I and wanted more. We, and we never meet these kids' father. He is long dead. I think we do meet their father. I think that, too. <laughs> yeah. And I think we better hold on to that. Okay. Because I have the same theory. Mm-hmm. I think we are simpatico on this. Okay. But he supposedly the husband has been killed by the Bigfoot sure, prior sure. to the events of this movie, leaving leaving the three children, Evie Joe, yep, uh, John Paul, and uh, uh, T Fish. T Fish is my favorite. To... And then they're two weird grandpas, uncles, or right. whatever. Right, and they and they live with they live with Don Wells and these two weirdo uncles. And the kids are are fishermen. Yeah, they're like crawdaddy fishermen or something. Catfish, I believe. Sure, okay. And they are not only are they are they catfish fishermen, they are easily, handily, the best fishermen in the county. Is this in New Orleans or where are we at, do you think? Well, I hope it's in New Orleans. So that we can imagine a link back to Thunderground. Right. But I suspect that that is not it. Also, these children are so good at catfishing, they have their own theme song. Oh my god. And, and you somehow don't like this movie? I hated it. Because, yeah, when they are out on what they call the bottom. Yep. The river. The bayou. Yeah. As they're out on the bayou... Yep. In their in their rowboat, could have movie could have used more fan boats. Right, right. As they're out on the bayou, a song, a very down homey country banjoy song starts playing. That at first sounds like the most generic, you know, movie country BF song. Yeah, sounds like a twang. Yeah, like a certain twang song. Right, like much like the soundtrack of Thunder Game. Yeah, but then the then the lyrics get bizarrely specific. Very accurate. They start mentioning the characters by name. T-Fish. And Evie Joe. Yes. Down to the creek and swamp they go. John Paul, T-Fish, little Evie Joe. Past the trees and the stumps they roll. To a hiding place. They only know Out on the bayou And it is And they, they play this song once And then yep. They have a second theme song The second time Because the first time they only go out to go fishing And do their thing right. to check right. the Whatever bait jar that they have yeah. I don't know what that is yeah. But it's important that you tell the people Why they go out the second time Because that's really the whole flux of the movie isn't it Right so, the, so the fir- when we first meet them, they're, they're, you know, doing their fishing. Later on into the movie, uh, they decide they want to go in search of Bigfoot. Right. And so then there is, a, they play the song again with new lyrics describing the Bigfoot situation and how dangerous it is. Foggy Creek, so mean they say, it ain't no place for little children to play danger lives there and men have died that old creek has a secret to hide right and when they're out there they're on their rowboat which they're hand rowing right but they're following a speedboat to the point where they can still see it the entire time okay. impossible how wait how are they rowing Rowing, you know, rowing. Right, right, okay. But the speedboat, you know. So they're catching up to the speedboat the entire time with their eight-year-old bodies rowing this boat. Right, and again, we should should update on the plot. What has happened is so apparently there's a Bigfoot monster at Boggy Creek. Name? Following up on the original movie. Yep. Named what? Big Bay Tie. I saw Big Bay Tie as close as you to me one time. Why is that a thing? Oh my gosh. And, and that's... So when they first mention the name of the monster, is Big yeah. Bay Todd. 
I didn't know they were talking about Bigfoot. Here's and you you mentioned the biggest part of the the biggest problem yes, of the movie. Yeah, yeah, I All agree. It is, it's characters, and I don't know who they are, why I need to know them, or anything. I, they're in they're fully like drawn out characters. They have lives. They hate other people in the movie, oh. but I don't know who they are. And, and that's right. And you know what? I love that. Why oh, no? Because this movie is just in media res the whole time. They no. drop us in. They're like, forget you, viewer. You better catch up to the southern charms of this movie. No, poorly written. I strongly disagree. <laughs> okay. Strongly disagree. So Big Bay Ty is the Big name foot. of the, is the Bigfoot. And I thought for all the world for the first 40 minutes of this movie. Now, knowing this was a Bigfoot movie. For the first 40 minutes of the movie, I thought that Bigfoot and Big Bay Tie were different things. Of course, why wouldn't you? Because they never set... Here's, here is one of my biggest problems with them. They never say the word Bigfoot. They never say Bigfoot, they never say Sasquatch, they just say Big Bay Tie and they call him a monster. And they say the hell out of Evie Joe. Yeah, 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 yeah. But... So when they're talking about Big Bay Pie, I thought it was a fish. Yeah, like they were going out to catch the biggest catfish. Yeah, like this is the legendary 30-pound catfish. Oh, but Big Bay Pie, he'll kill you. He'll get you. I believe. You watch out for Big Bay Pie. <laughs> he, I don't have. I thought I had it written down, but I know he 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 killed ten men. Yeah. Oh, he's strong, like a team of mules, and fast as the wind. One time. He was tracked by 40 dogs. He killed every one of them. Today, he, he might kill a cow around here. And tomorrow, he'd carry something off a hundred miles away. Big Bay Ty had been shot maybe 10 times, but he won't die. Who the hell's Big Bay Ty? I don't know. Yeah, they never tell us. Nope. We have to figure out from context, which is why I think it's good writing. No. Yes, yes, because, because this is a movie that respects its audience. They don't need to spoon What is the feed audience? Us. You, sir, sir, sir. You are the audience? Yeah, obviously. No. Nope. They hey. made a 1970s movie for a person in 2015. Yes. It's that far ahead of the time. And I'm not the only member of this movie's audience. I watched, uh, so, you know, we obviously we watched this movie before. So I was watching it in the office. Okay. Because I, I get paid for it. Right. And uh, I watched it with the office dog. Okay. Because we have an office dog. Mm -hmm. He sat in my lap. Now, normally, he does not care for the bad movie brothers movie. Okay. This dog was riveted. So did. So riveted. Did. Come on, Tom, Claude, get him in the boat. I don't ever want to trot right into Joe. I think we're going to be a moron here. Wait, look at that. And every you're not, you're not selling me. I trust me, and he every so often something will happen, and he does. You know, we get this. Right. Yep. He's in. I also made that exact face, <laughs> but it was it was more like a really. <laughs> Well, let's let's go let's go back a little bit in time. And so sure. we, what our so we have our characters Evie Joe, who's played by Dana Plato, from from I always forget it's Different Strokes. Was that yep. what she was on? Yeah. And she became a criminal later on. Yes. 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 So she's and then she and Don Wells are the only name actors in it. Probably. Yeah. Oh, I looked. Okay. And so then she's, then there's John Paul, who's, John Paul is just, I don't Huckleberry know. Finn. Yep. Huckleberry Finn. Yeah, Huckleberry Finn. 100%. Evie Joe, I would describe as the Veronica Mars of the Bayou. Who knows, one day I might even be a detective like Nancy Drew. Yeah. She likes she a good it. mystery. Yep. Yep. And then there's Tea Fish. Now, what is Tea Fish's deal? Tea Fish is the same character as, like, the littlest girl on the Patriot movie who doesn't talk, <laughs> but it's just there. But, in here, it's a weird plot point that Tea Fish does not talk. 
Who's that bald head, Joe? Is he a Landry? Yep, yeah, that's Crawfish Charlie's boy, T-Fish. You know, Charlie's grandpa's youngest son. Does he ever talk? I ain't never heard him. But folks say he talks to Abby Joe. I don't know anybody that's actually ever seen or heard him do that. Somehow, she always knows what he wants. She even knows what he's thinking. And he's not their brother. He's I'm a cousin. I'm confused by that, but that does seem to be the deal. Yeah. Yeah. So that he hangs out with them all the time, never talks. Characters throughout the movie point out, well, that there chief is. He don't talk. He don't talk. Which, what kind of name is chief is? Uh, his name is probably Todd, and he loves to fish. That's fair. I'm sure his name is Todd. Todd, yeah. Very popular name in the bayou. Uh, it might be Tucker. That, now, I believe Tucker. Or Tuck? Tuck? There goes Tuck. Everlasting Tuck. What was that book about? Or Tuck Everlasting. I don't remember what that was. I remember having to read it. Yep. Yep. Anyway. So, throughout this movie, they make this big deal. He never talks, he never talks. The, and so they get to the end of the movie. Right. The kids have, have gotten back from their big sports adventure. Yeah. And, and what happens? What and, happens? Well, and, and we need to drop a little plot. The, this yep. Bigfoot adventure is precipitated by a nosy reporter is in town. He wants to go see the Bigfoot monster. He gets a guy to take him out there to see it. The kids follow at a discreet distance. Like you say, chasing a motorboat. With a paddleboat. With, uh, how do they go? That's right. Like that. Right. They get out there, and then they, there's a big storm. Keeps them there. Bigfoot rescues them from Big Base High. Rescues them from the storm. Uh huh. And then when they they say through their actions, they also save the reporter and his guide from the storm. So the reporter shows up at the end of the movie to thank them for saving his life. Yep. And he says to them, and I got so mad. Okay. At I got so mad. He says, as a reward for saving my life, there is $20 in credit for you at the general store. At the general store? Woo! I've been by the landing and talked to the storekeeper. Uh, he has $20 worth of credit for the Landry children. It's for candy or anything else you want, uh, but it's just for the kids. My life is worth not $20, not even $20 a piece. $20. $20 credit. Yes. Yeah. Not even like, 20 bucks. Which he says they can use to, to buy candy and whatever. Right. And so T-Fish, mysterious T-Fish, has not talked all movie. Looks at, at Uncle Whatever and says, how much candy is $20? Grandpa, how much candy is $20? <laughs> <laughs> Now, mind you, in 1970-whatever, yeah. that's a lot of candy. That is a lot of candy, but that's what we were waiting for? That's, that's, a, king's, that's a king's ransom of candy. I'm not saying it's not a lot of candy. What I'm saying is, is this is what gets this kid to talk? He's the comic relief. He doesn't... Like, I expected him to have to be like, Bigfoot, please save us, or something. No. no. See, at the end, you're supposed to go, oh, T-Fish, oh. But, but that's no kind of payoff at all. Oh, I'm sorry, you imagined this to be a good movie? I have a list of things I liked and a list of things I didn't like, and that is on the didn't like. Yeah, but everything from you did like to the didn't like, then you got the movie. Well, but here's the thing. So this movie can be divided up into... So there's an hour, there's about an hour in the movie, and the storm hits. And the storm's like a half an hour. And it's the worst-looking storm I've ever seen. You, oh, my God. You can't see... The movie gets real dark. You can't see anything, but it's clear that there's actually nothing happening. Right. Claire, we're not Mr. Perkins! I don't know what you see him! There they are! Hey, Mr. Bruno! Over here! Hold up the ladder, maybe they'll see it! Do the actors. Right. It is... It is so boring. Yeah. That I loved the first hour of it. Loved it. 
You're a dummy. But that half hour is unwatchable. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. It is unwatchable. Awful. It is unwatchable. And and then like afterwards, it's also stupid. Now, what you mentioned that Evie Joe is like the Veronica Mars. Yes. Of the Bayou. Yes. Big fan Which, of Nancy Drew. Now that makes me think of a point that I wanted to make. Okay. All right. Is sure. I thought you had tricked me into watching a. A movie that starts live action, and then halfway through, Scooby Doo and the gang show up, and it turns into a Scooby Doo cartoon. That would have been. I thought you tricked me. That would have been great. Like I, I thought what I thought this was gonna be, and because we do no research beforehand, right? We we look for a weird movie that we don't think it. anybody has seen, and we watch. You got it. I thought this was gonna be a Bigfoot horror movie. Mm. Like I thought, like they would be in a cabin. And there'd be like scratching on the windows and howling right. and they'd be freaking out and here and Bigfoot's out there and look out. Right. This is not that. This is what you said. It's a movie for an hour and then it turns yeah. into the yeah. worst storm effects movie I've ever seen. Yeah. It's internal it's like it's a family adventure is what it, it is. Sure. But that storm is the worst, for sure. I, and watching the movie, I was so, I was so taken okay. and, and enthralled by this story of these three kids being the greatest fisher people in the town. Yeah, I needed more theme song. The, well, sure. But they, there's a scene where they go to the, they go to the fish market, and once again, they have the, they have the biggest catch of the day. Yep. There's this guy there, who might be my favorite character in the whole movie. Okay. Named Bruno. Yep. Bruno is the second best fisherman. To the children. And he hates the children so much. To the children who are a combined 18 years old? Yeah, yeah. And he's he's got to be 40. Right. And I, I sort of don't blame him for being like, I can't. Yeah. Why can't right. I catch more fish than these kids? This is insane. But he... But it's never like, ugh, it's like, yeah, he's going to kill these children. Right. We be Bruno again, we be Bruno again. One day I beat you fishing. One day I beat you good. You and your secret formula. And so the movie, I kind like I knew watching it even then that it was going to be a big story. Right. But the movie I wanted it to be, and the movie I think it should have been, was a fishing competition movie Ooh. where, like, something happens where their house gets foreclosed on or okay, something. Okay, see, here's here's what happened. You yeah. like this movie because you're watching that movie that's in your head. You're not watching it. It's the screen in front of you. Well, yeah, I like that. I like the movie that is the first hour of this movie, which yeah. could turn into a fishing competition at any moment. They have to, Bruno starts cheating, and they have to, they have to get their way around Bruno because all of the fishing stuff, is so great. But, I'm sorry, what actually happens? But the fishing the stuff worst does half happen. Hour, the worst half hour you've ever seen. And I see that you are hung up on that. I can put that half hour off to the side. No. I'm putting it off to the side. I don't care. That's because, the whole wrap up Because the what I love is I love their insane Uncle Bo. Yep. He's the white-haired uncle. Mm -hmm. He Who is, gets hit in the head? Yeah, and he is a nut job. I like when we meet him. He is having an argument with the other uncle, like they've been, like they're an old married couple. Well, they're the people from the Muppets. Yeah, they're Statler Waldo, the same. Yep. Yeah, and he, I love Uncle Bo's slam. Is he says to the like the the other uncle from about you've been saying that since before I was born, and Uncle yeah. Bo says you weren't born, the alligators left you. <laughs> that is fun. I loved it. Why, you was already married when I was born. You wasn't born. The alligators left you and then run off because they couldn't stand you. Dang it! And I also love them. He's their fishing guru. Mm -hmm. because, He's got the secret sauce. Right. The catfish Kool-Aid. Yep. It is called. Which, I don't know about you, but again, because, like you said, they just drop us into this movie and don't explain anything. Uh-huh. I thought that they were drinking Kool-Aid instead of catfish. 
Remind me to tell Uncle Bell that we're bad at catfish Kool-Aid. No, see, I thought it was like bath salts. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. This is obviously a drug movie. Yes. Yeah. Poor Max. But it, it's 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 some sort of goop that they're using to catch the catfish. They run out of it, and yeah. so they have to get Uncle Bo to make it, which involves the craziest voodoo chant. Slicky slime, mud and moss, deep dark water where the gator is boss. Stir it good when the day is late for a batch of mojo catfish bait. <laughs> What I, what, I don't think they run out of it as much as Big Bay Tide keeps drinking all of it. Oh, do you think, uh, you think that's what's going on? I think that's what's oh, happening. Oh, I, I didn't pick that up, but I believe it. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. I believe it. Because, <laughs> because, for some reason, and I was puzzled by this, they keep the catfish Kool-Aid hidden in, like, the hollows of trees. Up inside trees. Around the woods. Why? For Big Bay Tide. Why don't they just keep it in a in a in a cupboard and grab some when they're leaving home? Why do they have to side trip it over no. some dead tree? The biggest question of the movie hey. is why is Big Bay Tide so terrible at being Big Bay Tide? He's all out in the open twenty times in the movie. Well, first off, and as much as he's out in the open, another thing that did make me feel. You never get a good look at it. Oh, I saw him several times. Yeah, but you never, like, see his face. Like, you never yeah. get, like, a good, well-lit shot of, here he is, folks. Here's he's, the big foot. Be scared. No. No, like, the most you get is you get this shot of his butt, which looks like a, which is just a man dressed in a, in a wet fozzy bear costume. Yes. And that is it. Ow, now. And shadows. Like, you see him in shadow. Now that you're saying what he looks like he is, yeah. let's right. talk about it. Let's talk about it. So, the kids get caught up in this storm trying to find Big Day Pie for no discernible reason. Nope. Because it doesn't seem like they're interested in fame or notoriety. They just kind of want to. I think they're just nosy. Yeah, that's fair. And so they, the storm gets real bad. They find themselves in this abandoned shack. Trying it was to, like a boat, yeah. I thought, well, no, it had a roof. There was a boat. Huh? No, I think there was a boat tied up outside, but they were in some kind of boat house. I think you need to go look this up. I think there's a boat. I think a boat house. Anyway. Right. But it's definitely a wooden structure with a roof. And it's floating. I think it's just on the edge of the bayou. All right. In any of them. They're in there. They decide to start a fire. Inside. In the wooden building. And they weather out the storm there until Big Bay Pie shows up so he can drag, he can get them into this boat and drag them to safety. Right. Through the storm. Big Bay Pie, who is supposed to be killed. Ten yep, men. At least. At least. But it seems to have some weird liking for people. Yes. And that gets us to, oh, and the boat, like they recognize the boat as being. Their dead father's boat. Right. So apparently we both had the same idea at this Yes. I assume. I'm going to be upset if it's a different idea. Big Bay Tie is their daddy. Right. Absolutely. That's yes. got to be how this turns out. Yes. It is not. No. No. Nothing. It is not. It seems like maybe there's a story where the daddy got sick out at, at the river and Big Bay Tie, I don't know, brought him some food until he died or something. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I yes. was convinced that it was their dad. I'm still convinced. That he had either gotten amnesia yep. and like was just wearing like a weird fur coat that everybody thought was a Bigfoot from a distance. Yeah. Or what I, what I hoped, what I dreamed, mm -hmm. what I still hope and dream, wear Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. He'd gotten, he was bitten okay. by the Bigfoot and then himself became a Bigfoot. Uh, I mean, that's great. I never thought of that before. You should. You should. For a loop. You I should. I'm in a weird, crazy loop in my mind. I like it. But I think it's just their dad. 
And he's crazy. No, you see, because I think that how it should end is when she's driving him back, and they're and they and then Marianne sees the boat, and she goes, "That was your daddy's boat." And then she looks and she sees him out there, and he gives kind of a yeah, yeah. Had this been a good movie, that's how it would end. But this but, wasn't that. This was a bad movie. It was like seventy-five percent a good movie. No. Yeah. Yes, yes, At yes. most, it was a 5% difference. No, you're out of your mind. We need to take a survey. Of of the, of the what? The other three people who've seen this movie? No, we'll have new oh, people watch this Here's movie. the deal. Of the people who have seen this movie, uh-huh. you, me, and the dog, it's two the, to one against. The dog does not count. Obviously, the dog's on Big Bay Ty's side. It's not well, fair. Well, obviously. I suppose. No, new people need to watch this movie. And then we'll take a survey. You will find very quickly you are on the wrong end of it. I, I can't imagine that being. This is the worst movie we've watched. I, this, uh, this is not worse than the Wizard of Speed and Tom. Yes. No. Yes, it is. And here's how I know. So we we had some scheduling trouble. Yeah. I, because look at your arm. I broke my elbow. Okay. And so I had watched this movie, then I broke my elbow. So I watched I watched it again the other day to refresh my memory. No problem. Okay, now mind you, I did not have time to rewatch this movie. But it's terrible. Whereas I struggled through the rewatching of the Wizard of Speed and Top. I you're wrong on that. Struggle. Okay, so add that to the survey. Make people watch both of these back to back. Who? What fools are gonna do this? What? I think we can find them. I think you should use your collegiate direct connection to set okay. up to set up a psych test. All right. Where people are locked in a room with these movies. Okay, we'll do it different. We'll we'll show each one differently. We'll switch the people and the movie. No, you put all the same people in the room together. I understand with, the controls. With two movies. Yeah. And you leave them in there for like three days. Oh, God. And then you see which we'll movie sus- gets watched the most and who makes it out alive. Yeah, everybody be dead. That's fair. That it's is not fair. a good movie. It's, I will stand by it. And I will stand by it being a good movie. I wish we had had this movie on disc when we were kids. Ugh. No. Watching the same ten discs over and over again. No, you you take that back. The Bugs Bunny just cannot be surplaced. It wouldn't be su- su- surplaced. That's a word. No, it's not. Look it up. I will. Prove it. Okay. Supplanted. It was. That's a word. The Bugs Bunny disc would not be supplanted by. It would just be I an agree. Addition. It would not. It'd be an addition. Or Flash Gordon. Well, listen. Okay. 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 Uh huh. That's fair. It's. That's fair. Come on. What else you got? What else did we watch? The Jewel in the Nile. We never watched the... We had the Jewel in the Nile. I watched it? We maybe watched it beginning to end once. Watched it? Oh, well, Empire, Jedi. Empire? We had uh, those. What Indiana else? Indiana Jones? We did not have any. I thought so. No, we did not. We did not. I know. Trust me. I don't know. We had all of our dad's weird music concert gifts. Mm-hmm. Linda Ronstadt. Um, Billy Joel. There was a Goofy one, too, wasn't there? Yes, we had Sports Goofy. Yes. We had two Goofy ones. We had Sports Goofy and then one where Goofy has to raise a baby. We've gone off the rails. I can't imagine a subject that viewers would be more interested in than what movies we had on perhaps the most obscure video format that has ever existed. Yes. Because I can't remember any other one. Now you tend to tweet. Anyway. Anyway. Do we... I don't know. We might have covered this movie top to tail already. What? Yeah. What ranking star-wise, out of five... Out of five. Are you giving the first half... Okay. Then the second half, and then the total movie. That's a that's a good question. I like this question. I would say like the second half. That 
the second half, the storm part of the movie, I would, I could only give, like, can I give it zero stars? Yep. Then I would give it zero stars. All right. The first half of the movie, I would have to give at least three and a half. Jeez, come on, man. No. No. Well, what would you give it? I give the first half maybe two stars. Maybe. Maybe, probably one and a half. And then the second half for sure is zero. Eric, what would you give, what regular movie would you give three and a half stars to? Well, first off, you're throwing off my whole scale by making it out of five. Five Number stars. One. Four stars is the universal standard. Nope. Thing. We're doing five stars. All right. We're different. All right. What other movies would you give three and a half stars? What other movies would I give three and a half stars to? The Return of the Jedi. And you're comparing Return to Boggy Creek to that. Well, it's right in the title, isn't it? Come on, man. Uh, what? But, 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 a similar movie. A similar movie. In that... There's a Sasquatch type creature. Yeah. In that this could very well be Chewbacca. Number one. Number two, number two, I'm going to tell you how they're similar movies. Because the beginning of Return of the Jedi is awesome. I, the Jabba Palace stuff, I love. I love all the stuff in Jabba's Palace. And it's a movie that is great for the first part about it. And then it, and then toward the end, these furry creatures show up and okay, ruin everything. So the first half of Return of the Jedi and yeah. Turn to Boggy Creek, you're giving both of those three and a half stars. They're equally great. To you. No, that is not what I said. What I That's said what was, I'm asking you. I, no, that is not what you asked me. You asked me if I compared the beginning of Return of Boggy Creek to all of Return of the Jedi. <laughs> okay. If I'm, if I'm comparing just the two beginnings, then you're talking about a three and a half star movie and a four and a half star. Oh my god. You lost your mind, sir. I did not lost my mind. A man? First, we both agreed that we almost loved my chauffeur. This is not... Uh, yeah. The first hour of this movie is not markedly worse than my chauffeur. Yes, it is. Disagree. My chauffeur is this close. You could barely see the, the distance. Okay. This movie, the first half is blah, terrible. No, it is not. It is great. It is well, great. We'll leave it up to the fans. The fans will watch, and they will mark. They will respond. We want to see in the comments. We want to hear. You know, did you know how much did you love Return to Barney? Yeah. Right here. Tell me. Uh huh. Good or bad? That's Obviously right. Bad. You can just give us a thumbs up. A thumbs. No, oh, wait. That's. You can't give us no. And then we'll see where we stand. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to win. Okay. Very confident. Now, where's your star ranking for the whole movie? See, that's much tougher. That's much tougher. Because I guess, ultimately, ultimately I would have to put this in a My Chauffeur category. Where I really wanted to like it. And there were parts that I did genuinely like. But uh -huh. that the movie as a whole does kind of let down. Alright. So I, I guess out of five stars, I think I could only in good conscience give the movie two stars. Alright. In good conscience. There's a lot I like about it, but it's like, but, you know, a two star movie, there's nothing, like, that's what a two star movie is. I'll give it one. Well, you're a, you're a hater. Now, last and final question. Okay. It's a two part question. Okay. First question. Yeah. Which character would you take out of the movie to make it better? Okay, good question. Second part, which character in the movie would you take out of the movie to make a whole movie about? Those are two excellent questions. Um, who would I take out of the movie to make it better? You see, I don't know that there's... I don't feel like... I, there's, think, there's a, I think there's a very clear answer. I disagree. I disagree. I don't think... Because it's not the character's fault. Like, if... Answer the question. I guess Big Bay Todd. Yes, exactly. That's exactly the right answer. But I am I am open to a version of this movie where Big Bay Todd exists and it's still a good movie. Now, who would I make a whole movie about? That's that's you know I'm I'm right on the fence about this one. It's either Evie Joe or Bruno. You know who it is. The inept cop who can't figure out until the very end 
when the storm goes away. That's who I want. You want a whole movie about the inept cop? Yes. It's like that TV show, uh, Barney Fife. It's exactly that. Right, yeah, that's that great TV show, Barney Fife. Whatever, whatever. The, that character. That's fair, and I do like a good bumbling cop. Yeah. That's fair. In the bayou? Come on. You got. You make a strong point. You make a With strong Evie point. With Evie Joe around, she'll be a part-time character. Oh, no, you just cracked this movie wide open. Yeah. You just cracked this movie wide open. Here's what I'm going to propose to you. Okay. Return to return to return to Boggy Street. This is, a, about... this is a weekly television series where Evie Jo is grown up. She works at the police station. The bumbling cop through, you know, nepotism or whatever. He's in charge now. But Evie Jo is obviously the brains of the outfit trying to solve a series of murders oh. that Bruno has framed Big Bay Thai for. Bruno is out there murdering people. Evie Joe knows that it's not Big Bay Thai, but she's getting a lot of pressure from the NF top to put the uh, case down. It's the this, monster, Evie Joe. Evie this, Joe, it's the monster! I'm pretty sure that's the plot of that HBO show. True I, crime or whatever. It's not the plot of True Detective. It's True a, Detective. It's a little bit of plot of the Fargo TV show. It's a mix of True Detective and Fargo, the TV show, isn't it? And you wouldn't watch it? You wouldn't watch that show. I'd watch that if Big Bay Ty's out of it. Yeah, I'd watch no, it. No, well, Big Bay Ty's still in it. Yeah, but we're not focused on Big Bay Ty. No, we're not focused on him, but he's he's Carcosa. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. I'm in. Good. I like the part of this show where we figure out the movie. Yeah. This is what it is now. It's Evie Joe and the Miracle Solving Crime. Right, right. And Keyfish is in an insane asylum. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Now, he doesn't deserve to be there. Evie Joe wants him out, but he got institutionalized. No, you know what? Keyfish grew up to be Commissioner Gordon on Gox. <laughs> what sense does that make? I don't know. I think he looks like that guy. Are you watching that show? No. That show is insane. I recommend it highly. Okay. Have we have we covered Return to Boggy? We covered it in a minute in this show. All right. Do, do you have anything anything left to say? Um, shame on the people that made this movie. Shame on them. Congratulations. <laughs> I said congratulations. We'll leave it up to the viewers. We will leave it up to the viewers. If they are brave enough to watch the movie, let us know. Next time. Next time on Bad Movie Bread. Tell me. Rock and Roll High School for Red. Oh. All right. I know nothing about it. Is this like Batman Forever? All I know about it is... Is, is Jim Carrey in it? It is one of... Is Ra Val Kilmer in it? It is one of... Ryan Tell me now. Corey Feldman is in it. Okay. And it is one of Ryan Rogers' favorite movies. Oh. These are the only things I know about it. Will Ryan Rogers be a guest on the show? No, because I can barely figure out how to Skype in one person. Okay. Well, I mean, you can Skype in two different people. Yeah. Um, but like this movie, a sequel to... To, well, to Rock and Roll. Yeah. Which I believe starred the Ramon. Yes. But I believe they have nothing to do with it. Right. We'll find out. Next time. And? Yeah. Make that elbow feel better, buddy. Hey, thanks, pal. Yeah. It's getting there. Yeah, you look like you're about to play basketball. <laughs> I do. I feel like our dad. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.